Hello everyone and welcome back to Always Watching. Today we are discussing My Brilliant Friend Season 4 Episode 9. I thought this was such a brilliant episode. The music, the pacing, and they packed a lot in. And considering there's only one more episode left, I'm not really sure how they're going to wrap it up. Tina's disappearance, even in the novels, was quite shocking and it comes quite late. In the last episode, the tension between the brothers and Leela was at an all-time high, and it appears as though the threats that Mikhail made were not empty. Before we get to Tina's disappearance, we have to talk about Nino's much unwanted return. Elena is now making an effort to help Ima, and the first step is to establish a relationship with her father. And it made me really sad to think that the only time Ima sees Nino is at a cafe or restaurant when he has time. And it seems like now that they're no longer together, Nino really has no interest in making time for them. I also hate that Nino is thriving. Apparently he's a member of parliament. He was driving a BMW. He looks better than we have ever seen him. Like this man looks rich. Before arriving, both Ima and Elena are very nervous about Nino's visit. Ima is nervous because she's not that close to him, especially in comparison to Tina and Enzo and Pietro and her sisters. Elena is nervous because she doesn't really care about him anymore but she does want to appear strong. I did think it was disturbing that despite her disdain for Nino, she still has this weird obsession with his connection to Leela. That saying, old habits die hard, I think is very true. From what we gather, Nino was actively pursuing Leela and Leela was pretty transparent about it. And even if they were connected some way, I'm not sure why she cares. It's like this has nothing to do with you. Also, there's absolutely nothing to suggest that Leela would reciprocate these feelings. And during this visit, she wonders what Leela might be thinking, if she regrets not being with him, if she wonders what it would be like if Tina was his daughter. The whole time she's brainstorming, I'm just like, no one is thinking about Nino besides you. And I don't think she was ever obsessed with Nino. I think it was always about Leela in some way. And if you notice in this episode, Tina very much sees Ima as her twin. They look alike, she's always around her. And maybe in some weird way, Elena dating Nino was a way for her to be like Leela, be one with Leela. Like somehow she feels like being with Nino is the closest she has ever been to really understanding Leela. And the whole thing is just so weird. And I was just like, is there a reason you're still thinking about this man? When Nino arrives, Elena immediately gre greets him and she gives him a briefing. She's very worried that Nino will show everyone equal attention. And the purpose of this visit is to focus on Ima. And she's particularly worried about Tina because Tina is a scene stealer. Like right from the start of the episode, if you notice, Tina knocks on her door and she's like, what are you doing here? Because she knows if Nino is around Tina, he's going to be very impressed by her and she can't really afford any more distractions. Elena was really trying to prepare Nino. She even sent him a letter, but Nino being a complete waste man did not read that letter. And he looks like he just dropped by. He kind of promises that he might come back, but after the disappearance, we literally never see him again. And I just don't think he's someone that will actively take a part in his daughter's life unless he has a gun to his head. At first, Nino's visit is going very well. He pays Ima a lot of attention. He buys her more gifts. And you can tell that Ima is very happy. And she's really happy that she is receiving special attention instead of Tina. Like he's not really paying attention to her as much. However, he does notice her and he does compliment her. And you can see that Elena is just so uncomfortable because a part of her wants to remove Tina, but at the same time, she's part of their family. And so she's just communicating with Nino, like mentally communicating, like you better not deviate from the plan that I know you didn't read. And for a while, Nino read the room, but he completely messed it up. And I thought the scene of him giving Tina the pen was really unfortunate because you could see that all the work that he had done with Ima completely went away. And we know that Tina is very intelligent and very charming. And the fact that she could write her own name, like you could see the discomfort of everyone in this room. Day Day and Elsa looked like they didn't know what to say. But I will give Nino credit, he knows how to pivot. He noticed it, 
he seemed somewhat concerned, but not really concerned enough to follow up ever again. And he's like, you know what? Forget about all this. Let's go look at my BMW. They all go outside to hang out and mingle. And the whole time, all Elena can think about is Lilo and Nino reconnecting. And I thought that scene of her spotting Lila and Nino talking and she's trying to hide was hilarious because it's like, first of all, we can see you. Second, no one is looking out for you. And Elsa was just laughing and we'll get back to Elsa later. Like her daughters have really changed a lot. Like they've really adapted to this neighborhood. And the way she looked at Elsa, like I am gonna get, she looked at her like she wanted to just slap her. And from the outside looking in, it does look like Nino is charming Lila. He's talking about all this ama all these amazing things that he's done and how wonderful his life is and how Leela should try it sometime. And I don't think Leela is charmed by him. I think she knows he's a snake oil salesman, but she just indulges him because this man just doesn't know when to shut up. And you can see it in Enzo's face, like, is this guy done? And I also thought it was really telling that it was Leela that was holding Ima and not Nino. Like she, they didn't really have that bond that they did during the visit, which was really unfortunate. It's at this moment that Elena notices that Tina is nowhere to be found. And at first you think, oh, she's probably somewhere, like she's just hanging out somewhere. And then it dawns on Lila that that might not be the case because she remembers what happened to her son and having a similar feeling that something may have happened to him. And I think Lila was very concerned about Gennadio. She felt like if the brothers were to come at her, come at her personally, it would be through her son. I don't think she ever imagined it would be through her daughter. And you can see it in her face. Like She knows that her daughter is gone. Now what follows is a very intense investigation. There are so many different, different accounts of what could have taken place. Some people saw Tina with a man. Others think she was hit by a large truck. But where is the body? Tina has disappeared without a trace. Now the news report does mention Elena's article. And I'm not going to lie. I do think it was the brothers that did it. I don't see who else could have done it, but given this neighborhood, it could have been anyone. It could have just been a random creepy stranger that picked her up off the road. Could have been an angry client of Leela's. Could have been her brother. Could have honestly even been her son considering that he is just drug addicted and you don't really know what state of mind that he's in. When Marcello and Mikhail come over to help, I'm not going to lie, my immediate reaction was they definitely had something to do with it. Mikhail seemed way too calm, especially considering that just an episode ago he slapped her and threw her to the ground. Tina's disappearance destroys Lila and Enzo. Lila at this point barricades herself in this apartment in the dark and this also triggers the end of their big happy family. We never see Leela visit Elena anymore. We never see her reconnect with her daughters. Like that bond that they had created is now severed. The disappearance puts Elena in a very tough spot because on one hand, she wants to help her friend. On the other hand, she needs to protect her daughters as well. I'm not really sure how much longer she can live here. During this time, Elena loans Ima out to Leela, hoping that it would offer her some comfort. Unfortunately, the way that Leela is treating her daughters is not great. Ima doesn't really know what's going on and Lila doesn't really have the patience to explain it to her. And throughout this episode, it's very clear that Elena's daughters are done with her. And in a way, their disdain for Lila actually bonds them in some way. This is the closest we've seen the girls become. Like they really forge a bond around never wanting to be around Lila again. Dede makes a very insensitive comment saying that Lila never really wanted her children. And the fact that she hasn't shed a tear is proof but we know that tears are not really a sign of grief. Elena didn't cry when her mother died, but we know that she was in immense pain. And I think this disappearance forced Elena to really take note of all the changes in her daughters because her daughters have really been covering for each other. There's a lot I didn't know. Like watching Elsa smoke was kind of crazy. I'm like, who gave you a cigarette? Apparently she's been skipping classes and doing any old thing in this neighborhood. And Ellen is like, what is going on here? And in a way, now that Leela is no longer part of their family or they feel like they don't really want to spend time with her, they really have to rely on each other. One of the most jarring scenes is when Elena leaves on a business trip and leaves Day Day in charge. However, she doesn't inform Leela that Day Day is in charge and this causes chaos. Leela assumes responsibility for Elena's daughters and her 
protection is coming from a good place but the way she's doing it is extremely destructive she literally grabs them and barricades them inside the apartments as if like something terrible was going to happen and elena comes back like what is happening here and on some on one hand she's horrified that her daughters were locked away like that but on the other hand she can't imagine what Leela is going through. I think at one point she makes a comment about Chernobyl, how the reason that she locked them away was to protect them from radiation. Like she was really exaggerating to protect her friend, but she knows that none of this is justified. I thought that scene of all her daughters sitting on the bed complaining about Leela was so wonderfully shot because Ellen is like, listen, I don't have time for this because she still has to go to work. Nino is not helping. She has to tend to her friend. And at this point, she's at her wit's end. And I think Tina's disappearance really severed a bond that they had created because they were they had daughters. And you can see this in the way that Elena tries to pull Leela out of her grief. She's like, go back to work, try to find something that you love. And Leela is looking at her like, do you know me at all? And Leela has never had the luxury of operating from a place of love. Everything that she's done has been survival. She's learned to get good at things that she's not that interested in, in order to survive. And so without her daughter, she's not really sure what the point is, right? She was working to support her family. She wasn't really working as a way to fulfill her passions. Whereas Elena goes to work and she really loves her job. Leela never, like her only love was, like, was her daughter and her children. And without that, she doesn't really have a purpose. And I'm not really sure Elena appreciated this in that moment. And Leela does not want to talk about Tina. She makes it clear to Elena that this is not a topic of conversation. And as a result, Elena imagines the conversation they would have if Leela wanted to. And a part of this conversation is projection I felt and I thought it was really well shot the way that Elena was talking to herself while she imagines Leela whispering in her ear and the line that struck out at me is Tina was supposed to be better than all of you and in a lot of ways Leela's whole family just feels like a tale of lost potential what could have been her brother is dead her daughter has disappeared and she's really trying to hold on to what she can and it just feels like her whole family is stuck her brother had immense potential as a shoe designer, but he was unable to really become anything because of his father and because of circumstances. And everything that she hoped for her daughter is now gone. It, it's, it's disappeared. Elena, for better or worse, at least her daughters will go on and build on her legacy and they'll do, they'll do fine for themselves. What is Leela's legacy? Like, what happens to her and her family? I thought what Elena said about how people organize memories to suit themselves was really telling because I think in some way Elena feels that Tina's disappearance ends all hope of making up for their childhood. Like, these daughters could have grown up together. They could have gone off to school together. Like, no one would be left behind. And I think the way that both Leela and Elena's life turned out, it's really sad to say, but sometimes when it comes to generational trauma, like, depending on where you're from, some people never escape that trauma. They never escape that violence. Elena barely got out of it but Leela is stuck in it. During a walk, they bump into Marcello and his brother. And I think Kyle is way too upbeat. Like the way that he's looking this episode, he, it's almost like he's gloating, like maybe it's just me, but I just feel like he definitely had something to do with it. He then invites Elena and her daughters to come to the library with them. And he starts to lecture them about how good Elena is because she was able to read and escape the neighborhood and how bad everyone else is because they were not able to do the same. Some people never make it out of this hell. And I think Tina's disappearance ends Leela's hopes of ever coming out of this circumstance. And during this conversation, you can tell the tone has shifted. Elena looked very nervous because she doesn't really know what happened to Tina. And a part of her probably suspects that these brothers had something to do with it. And she definitely doesn't want the same thing to happen to her girls. Now, later that night, the weather suddenly changes in the neighborhood. They get this gust of really violent wind. Elena is a bit worried about Leela, so she goes and does her routine checks. Like, she finds Leela in the bathroom. And I thought this mirror conversation was one of the best moments in this whole episode. Leela comments on her daughter's appearance and her son's paternity. And she makes a comment about Gennario, how when, when he was was born she really truly believed 
that Nino was the father and she raised him as if Nino was the father. And at first Elena isn't really understanding and you could tell she was kind of triggered like, oh, what do you mean? I thought we settled this already. And I don't know why she just has like this, this weird fear that Lila and Nino could end up together, but that fear has never gone away. I think what Lila was trying to explain to Elena was that sometimes we unknowingly manifest our worst fears. She uses the example of Elena's limp and she calls her out. She's like, listen, I've been observing you for some time and this limp of yours is not real. It was just an attempt to keep your mother alive. And the way that Elena reacted, I don't think this thought ever really occurred to her. I think she really believed that she had a limp and I always thought it was psychological as well. And the way that she tries to counter Lila was very funny. She's like, no, I have a bit of pain. Like, don't make fun of me. And the more she thought about it, the more she realized that maybe what she was saying was true. During this dinner conversation, Elena thanks Lila for her influence and helping her make connections. She says between distant things. And I think a lot of the reason she's unable to write is because Lila is paralyzed. And maybe some part of her has grown accustomed to Lila, pushing her in the right direction or inspiring her in some way. And now that Lila is basically in mourning, it almost feels like Elena is in mourning too. And the way that Lila was looking at Elena, she doesn't interrupt her, she just listens to her. And this is the calmest we have seen Lila, and it was kind of an eerie calm, because some part of me felt that maybe she's slowly going to like get out of this, she's slowly going to get back to normal, but what happens the next day completely shatters this. Now, the way the murders were orchestrated towards the end of this episode I thought was brilliant. I thought the score was amazing. I thought the buildup was amazing. Like it was just so meticulously shot. Now, we will never know who killed Marcello and his brother. I do you think Lila made the, the decision during that walk when Mikhail was basically bragging about libraries and people being good and bad? But we will never know. Like my theory is that it had to be the brothers. Like I don't see who else could have done it? Before the murders, Elena goes upstairs to give Leela her breakfast, and she's feeling a bit more optimistic, especially after their conversation the night before. And she finds Leela in labor. Like she is basically, it's as if she's giving birth. Like she's in a crazy amount of pain. And Elena doesn't really know what to do about it. She's like, are you sure it's not your period? Are you sure, like, like what's wrong? Leela looks much worse than we have ever seen her. Like she looks destroyed. While she's in this phantom labor, the brothers end up being killed. Elena, in, a, in an attempt to help Lila, goes out to get her some painkillers. And then she hears gunshots. She immediately runs over to find Marcello and Mikhail dead. And she doesn't even know what to do about it. She's in shock, the neighborhood is in shock. And then she proceeds to imagine what she thinks happened and she imagines Pascal as the shooter with his girlfriend as they are currently on the run. I think her fantasy of what happened to the brothers was a lot of projection. Like the idea of these men getting exactly what they deserve from people they never saw coming. When she comes home, Lila informs her that Tina had come out of her belly again to take her revenge and she is responsible for the killings. And Elena just looks at her like, are you crazy? That's not at all what happened. But I think in some ways, this was Leela's way of acknowledging that her daughter is gone and with it, any humanity she had left inside her. And so overall, I thought this was an excellent episode. Even in the books, it's not really wrapped up. Like all of this happens quite late. And I think the point of Tina's disappearance is almost like a metaphor for Leela and Elena's relationship. Again, some people never make it out of that trauma. They stay in it. Leela, unfortunately, has had to make decisions that were less than ideal. And as a result, she's kind of entered a business that is pretty violent. But what was the alternative? Her, her life ended when her father threw her out the window. And I think she was hoping with Tina that with enough resources, she could push her out. But given her line of work, that was always a long shot. And I think some part of Leela knows that she is responsible for her daughter's disappearance. And she's not really sure how to come to terms with that. And so overall, you guys let me know what you think. And until next time.